Hello, my name is State Representative Roger Bruce, and I uh, want to welcome you to a special edition of Under the Gold Dome. Uh, as you know, we usually do these once a week uh, to talk about the issues that took place here at the Capitol. Uh, this time, though, we have a special guest with us, uh, the chairman of our transportation uh, committee, and uh, we're going to let everybody again introduce themselves, and then we're going to jump right into this, because all we're going to talk about today is transportation. Try to clear up some of the questions that people have uh, around this topic uh, across the state. So with that, why don't we start, and uh, we'll introduce ourselves, and then we'll get right into the conversation. Hello, my name is State Representative Deborah Baysmore, and I represent District 63, which encompasses a portion of Fulton, Fayette, and Clayton County. Hello, I'm Senator Nakima Williams of Senate District 39, um, completely in Fulton County, but five municipalities in the city of Atlanta, East Point, College Park, Union City, and South Fulton. All right, you have a lot to do. <laughs> um, I'm Kevin Tanner. I chair the State Transportation Committee, and I represent District 9 in the Georgia House, which is in North Georgia, part of Forsyth Counties, Dawson County, and Lumpkin County. My name is State Representative William Bodie, House District 62. I, my district comes in South Fulton and also parts of Douglas County. I think me and Senator Williams have the same city, City of South Fulton, Union City, East Point, College Park, unincorporated Douglas County and Douglasville. All right. So again, thank you for joining me on this topic. Uh, as we all know, this is something that is uh, really important to all of our collective constituencies. Uh, and what I've found is that most people have no idea how we handle and fund transportation uh, in the state, how we decide how projects are, are done. Uh, it's a lot of confusion around it. So I really appreciate, uh, Mr. Chairman, you taking the time to come and try to answer some of the questions and, and, and resolve this. Why don't we start by just letting you talk about transportation in the way that you uh, choose to. Uh, in terms of just getting the message out as to how people uh, can, you know, be part of this process of determining what happens within their, uh, where they live. Well, first of all, let me thank you for having me today come <coughs> on and be able to try to talk through transportation issues. You know, there's a few things that we do at the state level that I think we all agree are extremely important. Education's always one, and I think transportation and infrastructure is at the top of the list. We, it's something that the state does well, and it's something we have to continue to do well. Mm -hmm. uh, a, couple, a few years ago, in 2015, we came together, and, and several of us in this room were here, and we worked very hard on House Bill 170, which was the Transportation Investment Act of 2015. Uh, for the first time in our lifetime, we renewed our investment in transportation infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, collecting around a billion dollars a year in revenue that's being spent all over the state. Uh, for those of you who are watching this, if you drive around the state, you're seeing orange barrels everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's a result of the leadership uh, in this room and throughout the General Assembly being able to uh, come together on a, a very important issue and fund the infrastructure that's needed in Georgia. Well, while you're talking about that, why don't you talk real quickly about how that funding works? Uh, the, primarily, the funding comes from uh, gas tax. That gas tax, uh, originally we had several different variations. There was a sales tax on the gas tax uh, that fluctuated with the cost of fuel. So when gas was high, the amount of tax being paid went up. When it was low, the amount that was being paid went down, and it was very difficult to average that out to be able to come up with a good budget number. So what we did is just put a flat fee on the gas tax here in Georgia, and that's being collected, and those, those monies flow back through the General Assembly, and all of our fuel tax is restricted here in Georgia by the Constitution, and it has to be used for roads and bridges. So that money is going back in and being used for roads and bridges. There's some other types of fees that are collected. Hotel motel tax is one uh, that's also being used to fund uh, roads and bridges, but primarily it is with the gas tax. In addition to that, the federal government also has a motor fuel tax 
uh, that's being collected. That money goes to Washington, and then that money is sent back down to the states in a formula that then can be utilized by the states through transportation projects. So now that's primarily how our roads are fu uh, funded here in Georgia. Okay. And just to, to answer also your question, uh, Representative, about so people will understand how our road projects chosen, I think that's important. Yes. Uh, road projects are chosen uh, by primarily by a formula that has been created by uh, both our Department of Transportation and also the U.S. Department of Transportation because many of our projects have federal funding. Um, and what happens is local communities, local leaders, uh, mayors, city council members, and county commissioners will meet with their local uh, GDOT, Georgia Department of Transportation mm -hmm. officials, and they'll develop a, a plan, a step, a long-term plan for transportation projects, and they have an opportunity to have input in those. All of that work then eventually flows up to uh, the transportation committees in the House and Senate, and we get a 10-year plan that's required to be given to us by mm -hmm. HB 170, and then we ultimately have to adopt that plan. But there's very little politics, quite frankly, involved in how those projects are chosen because we wanted to take politics out of that. We wanted it to be based on the needs that were important mm -hmm. to being able to get these done. So that's typically how the projects are actually funded. And, and, and I'm going to let you guys ask, ask whatever questions you want to, but you, know, you have situations uh, where uh, people they, they send us emails and text messages all the time. Can you get this street fixed? Can you get that street fixed? And some of the, sometimes some of these streets that they're asking us to get fixed are not state roads. Uh, they're county roads, they're city roads. Uh, some of them are roads that they want have, want to have. You know, you go into some of the smaller rural areas, you still have some uh, dirt roads that, that people want to get concrete on and. Uh, so I, I guess the question becomes, how do, do, do you, or is there money available for those local projects, or is that a totally different process? Uh, there, are, there is money available for local projects. There is a formula based on the number of, of road miles, county road miles in each county, and each year uh, that dollar amount is sent out to those local communities and that local community, the local governing authorities there get to ch decide how that money is going to be spent. Okay. Those monies can be used on local roads. Uh, in addition to that, if a county has a safety issue, uh, maybe where a county road's intersecting with the uh, state road, uh, there's safety funds that may be available for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would encourage uh, citizens who have specific problems, especially if it's on a state road, to, to let your representative, your senator know, because they can work with the Georgia Department of Transportation to get those issues resolved. Uh, but I will tell you, major projects, such as wanting a signal light at an intersection mm -hmm. or changing uh, a stop sign to a yield sign, or, or getting a turn signal, those decisions are typically based on what we call warrants. And that's a, a formula that the number of accidents and other factors are plugged into a formula, and it spits out the results. And that's how the uh, Georgia Department of Transportation determines whether or not they're going to change in a certain intersection to another type of intersection. Okay. So we have, as, as, as representatives and senators, uh, we don't have a lot of control over that because that's a formula-based project. Okay. You guys ready to chime in here? I am um, Representative Tanner. I represent um, the heart of Atlanta, and my husband and I live on top of a MARTA station. And um, the Ashby Street MARTA station is okay. right underneath our house. And so thinking about the congestion and the traffic, people complain about the traffic yeah. all the time, friends from out of state. And I tell them I don't get on the interstate, so I don't deal with it a lot. And I don't get it. I live 1.9 miles from the Capitol, so I don't have to deal with a lot of the traffic. But so many other Georgians do. So what things do you know that are on the horizon that are going to either enhance our transit experience um, for rail services or ease some of the congestions that are congestion that are that's currently on the roads? Well, that's a very good question, and I, as someone who commutes in every day from uh, up at the upper end of Georgia 400, uh, I understand the concerns people have with traffic because I sit in traffic each way about two hours every day. Uh, it's, it's, it's a large, it's a big issue. 
Uh, one of a couple of things that we're doing. One is Georgia Department of Transportation has a very aggressive project currently underway for express lanes. We opened the ones up down in Henry County on 75 reversible express lanes. Uh, in the mornings they're coming north and in the evenings they're both going south. Uh, the idea there is there are managed lanes. You pay to ride in those lanes. Uh, so the price goes up with the more traffic. It keeps the lane open and free. Um, in addition to that, we're currently working on about 35 miles of express lanes up on 75 in Cobb County, okay. which will be the longest stretch of express lanes in the entire country. Uh, we also have plans up Georgia 400 in Fulton County to uh, do two more express lanes, and there's a project uh, underway, planning of those projects all around the metro Atlanta area for express lanes. Now, why that's good is, number one, people who want to pay for that service get to, and that's how the lanes are actually paid for and funded. So we're not tolling or charging people to use existing roads that they've already paid for. Okay. Uh, these, are new, these are new roads, new lanes. But in addition to that, th those lanes can also be ex accessible to express buses and, and bus rapid transit operations. Uh, so if you, uh, for instance, as we look at extending express lanes up Georgia 400, for instance, if we, at the same time we were buying the right-of-way for those express lanes, if we could also buy right-of-way for BRT stations, bus rapid transit stations, uh, and then when the express lanes were open, then through partnerships with MARTA or others, we could open up bus rapid transit stations, and uh, the buses then can use the express lanes, and you can have a speed limit ride all the way from the very outer ends of our perimeter all the way to uh, downtown, the airport, wherever you may be going. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, we, for the last year, uh, Speaker Ralston appointed the State Transit and Governance Commission, uh, and I've been chairing that commission for the last year, and our focus has been on improving mobility and transit. I mentioned HB 170. That, that was the lift to fund highways and bridges. Uh, but one of the things we recognized during the debate over HB 170, we have a transit issues, uh, specifically in the metro Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. You know, the MARTA came online about the same time as the Metro did in Washington and the San Francisco uh, trains folks did out in San Francisco. But we have not been able to achieve the level of success that they have. And a lot of it has to do with the state hasn't been a major player. We've not funded transit in, in an aggressive way in the state. So the Transit Governance and Funding Commission, we're looking at ways to create a regional governance structure. We're looking at ways to make sure we're protecting what MARTA has built up over the years and protecting the investment of Fulton and DeKalb and now Clayton counties that they're putting into the system and making sure all those contractual agreements are protected. But giving an opportunity, though, for other communities, Gwinnett and Cobb and others, to be able to get into that system and uh, to be able to be successful. And I think all of those things combined is going to open up great opportunities very, very soon for us to expand transit services around the metro area. Okay. Thank you, Chairman Tanner. Um, I have a question, and you can probably visualize what the concern would be. Old National Highway, getting off, getting on, going in three different directions, it is so much congestion. And so I'm sure we have it other places, but um, when they striped out the one lane, um, it created more of a problem. Um, I've heard from my mayors, I've heard from city council, my constituents, even as far down in Fayetteville. So it has to run down to Fayetteville, 314. So my question is, um, even after me meeting with GDOT and trying to rectify the problem. I had some suggestions, but what would your suggestion be to really alleviate some of this? I've sat there for about a half an hour trying to just, on the ramp, to turn left to get on on National. So, and it is very dangerous also. Well, and un unfortunately, we, uh, we are behind in Georgia with a lot of road improvements because we lacked the funding for, for many years. So, uh, you know, when we did HB 170, we, we said, and a lot of people forgot this part of the conversation, uh, that that was just really to maintain what we had. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't enough to actually build the roads and the infrastructure we needed in the future. So uh, we're, we're doing much better because of HB 170, but it's still going to take time to catch up. Uh, but I would, I would encourage you to continue dialogue with GDOT and 
I'll be, I'll be glad to uh, set a meeting up with you and some folks from the commissioner's office at GDOT to have that conversation to maybe get another set of eyes on, on that project. Uh, the other thing I'll say too is, is communities. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I represent part of Forsyth County. Forsyth County has huge congestion problems on Georgia 400 and other roads. Uh, so what they, their citizens got tired of the congestion. So what the commissioners did in Forsyth is they, they developed a project list which included some state roads, which included actually adding a third lane to Georgia 400 north and south. Mm -hmm. And they went to the Georgia Department of Transportation and they said, look, if we'll go to our citizens and ask our citizens to do a bond to pay for these road improvement projects, they did a 250 million roughly dollar bond, what can you bring to the table? And that is a model that I would encourage other communities to look at because the Georgia Department of Transportation, when you bring skin to the game, uh, mm -hmm. they will find ways to help your community. So I would encourage the local community to look at what do they think the fix is, mm -hmm. to work with GDOT and to tell GDOT what they might be able to bring to help fund those projects. Uh, Forsyth County is doing it. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of the third lane open and we're going to be opening the rest of the third lane by May of this year. And that's just one project that that paid for. It was multiple projects throughout the county has having a real impact. Re Re Representative Bodie, I'm going to let you go next, but if you don't mind, I want to just throw one, one other thing out. <laughs> Um, when, we, when we talk about transportation, you know, when we talked the other day, it was one of these issues where you have all these different counties mm -hmm. and each county is doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as opposed to talking with each other and coming up with a regional plan of some sort that, and I know there, there's some that are working on it, but for the most part, we still have people doing a whole lot of things independent of each other. And uh, the question I asked you the other day, and I wasn't sure exactly that I understood the answer to it. Um, years ago, um, you know, I got my start in politics with Maynard Jackson, and under him, MARTA came into existence. I know it started before, but it came into existence under him. And uh, I mean, even the name, the Metro Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority, why would we not just, you know, put resources behind MARTA because it's already there, we already have a transit, we already have buses, we already have trains. Why not put resources into MARTA and just let MARTA expand to all these other counties so that we have one system that's serving everybody? Well, and one of the things that we're looking at doing in this legislation is making it clear that MARTA would, is the only authorized rail provider in the region because I think that we've, we've had uh, too large of an, and I'm a business guy, so I look at things through what makes business sense mm -hmm. and what's the return on investment. We've spent a lot of money over the years, tax dollars, both federal, local dollars on, on MARTA. So it would be foolish of us to try to start a second rail company. Right. And uh, we want to protect the integrity of MARTA and where they currently are with rail. Uh, when it comes to other modes of transportation, MARTA's created through a constitutional provision that specifically lists five counties. Right. Uh, and, and those are the MARTA counties we have today, plus Cobb and Gwinnett. So uh, MARTA really cannot expand out into those other areas we're talking about in the 13-county region. Um, there will be ways contractually that we can make that happen in the future if those communities want that service. Uh, but really what we're looking at is, is other forms of mobility outside rail in those other communities because it's much less expensive. Uh, so the idea is, is that we, we do want to encourage expansion of, of MARTA into mm -hmm. the counties they're able to go into with rail and other services. And I think you'll see a major announcement of some of that as we roll out this legislation. So we want to work to support what MARTA is, what it's become, but at the same time create an atmosphere of a regional coordination where uh, these other communities can feed into that primary backbone mm -hmm. of the system, which is MARTA. So, uh, and you're exactly right. We have 11 separate providers, transit providers in the 13 county region we're talking about. Um, all of those except MARTA is basically running bus service, mm -hmm. and many of them are passing each other, going to the same places. Same place. And there, it, so we have to stop operating in our silo mentality, and we have to somehow force regional coordination. That starts with a regional plan and tying funding to that regional plan. Mm -hmm. MARTA is going to be uh, have a big seat at that table and be heavily involved in that. But at the same time, we, we have more than just those five counties that we have to consider in this mix. And, 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 and lastly, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Representative Bodie. I, I heard you say earlier that 
politics does not take a big, uh, does not play a big part in the decision as to what projects take place. But what about the politics that goes with deciding, you know, who's going to be in, in charge, so to speak, of of the, the companies or the agencies or whatever you want to call it uh, that will do what you just said? Well, my my view is on this, and again, uh, we're still working on the legislation, that we would create a board uh, that would be comprised of 10 districts within those 13 county, those 13 county regions. Mm -hmm. Those districts would be drawn to take into account traffic patterns and commuter patterns and transit patterns within that di those districts, making sure we're giving uh, the correct amount of treatment to Fulton and DeKalb who've paid into the system mm -hmm. for so many years and to the other large counties that are in the area, Cobb, Gwinnett, Gwinnett being one of the larger counties. Um, and then those individual members would be elected to serve on that board uh, with input from the local delegation members of the House and Senate and from the chairman of the commission or commissioners and from the um, from a mayor. So that those members would be elected from those of you who serve mm -hmm. those communities, being able to, to find who is the best local professional okay. to be in that position. So they're not a politician. They're, and, and you know one of the things I think that's important, and I said this earlier at a meeting I was at, there's a lot of eyes on Georgia right now in the business community mm -hmm. uh, looking at Georgia. That's why this is so important that we get it right and that we work together. So when these folks look at Georgia and they decide, do we want to come to Georgia? They don't see a, a fight over how to do transit. Right. They see a united front that's funding transit, that's developing a plan for transit and is leading in this effort. And they want to be here in Georgia and they want to create jobs that pay m good money. The other thing that we're mm -hmm. working on and, and because of my uh, personal situation this afternoon, my, I was not able to keep the meeting, but I've asked Keith Parker, who used to be the CEO of MARTA, to work mm -hmm. with us now and, and take his two hats, one, his goodwill hat he's wearing now, but also his old hat at MARTA. How can we look at improving opportunities for workforce development around mm -hmm. transit services? How can we look at moving people to GED centers and to technical schools and to colleges to get a good education so they can get jobs? Uh, and locating these businesses in communities where they offer opportunities for employment so people mm -hmm. can stand on their own two feet. Okay. Representative Bowden. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here. Uh, first and foremost, and we definitely appreciate this information. Uh, since I've been elected, uh, it, it is really uh, a high concern of constituents and elected officials in South Fulton, heavy rail. Uh, we both know how expensive the bottom mile heavy rail is and, you know, the environmental constraints that you have and the developmental time you have for heavy rail. But with your new plan, is light rail going to be a viable option? Because we know light rail is less expensive. You can utilize it a lot more. A lot more people can utilize it in other cities, uh, other municipalities and, and counties as a way to move people from A to B? Is it going to be something viable under your plan? Uh, it, it will be. But let me say this. One of the things that we want to be very careful of as a state is not to dictate, uh, and, and I'm speaking for myself, okay. to dictate to this region what their transit plan should look like. We want to set the groundwork and the framework and the parameters for the creation of a regional authority and the creation of how those board members are elected who are again professionals in that area and that community that all of you sitting at this table who represent those areas would have input and who that member should be and then they come together and they develop a regional plan that they then send to the ARC and the ARC is the MPO for the, identified by the federal government for this area and they submit that to the feds and it becomes the plan and based on that they will look at whether it should be light rail, whether it should be heavy rail, whether it should be BRT, or whether it should be whatever the case might be. The other thing we want to look at is the last mile service. How can we partner with Uber and Lyft and other ride share companies to provide transit? How can we take in the autonomous vehicles that we know are coming into this process? So all of those things are important. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, though, heavy rail is extremely expensive. Yeah. Light rail is extremely expensive. 
So I think we've got to create opportunities for some additional funding in certain areas, South Fulton being one of those. And we have to look at things that we can do sooner than later. And I think that's where bus rapid transit, utilizing express lanes, those are things that I think we can do in the very foreseeable future versus waiting another 20 years to run a heavy rail line that at the time will probably be outdated because of technology and, and the type of transportation we're going to be using in that time. So answer your question. Yes, they can look at that. It will be up to the uh, Regional Transit Authority. Okay. okay, we're going to go back to this side of the room here. So Chairman Tanner, question about those areas that really are pushing back, that don't want transit to come through, but at the same time they're denying other individuals that so they may sit in that area, but beyond that area other people want it. How do you deal with that situation? Because I represent one of the counties that is pushing back. Well, one of the things that we can do or, or can contemplate doing in Amarta County, for instance, that's been authorized in the Constitution, like Cobb, uh, Cobb's a perfect example. There's places in Cobb that do not want to talk about transit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other parts of Cobb that want to transit very badly. Um, so what we can do there is we, as the General Assembly, we can create a transit district within Cobb and allow that county commission to create that transit district and then allow that area possibly to vote and to accept that service only in that area, and they're the only ones paying for it. Um, outside the five counties specifically mentioned, uh, we have to deal with something called the uniformity clause in the Constitution, uh, which restricts us to some degree on what we can do as far as carving out areas. Uh, but I think as the Regional Transit Authority is up and running and working with these communities, they may bring back some suggestions to the General Assembly. It, it may require a constitutional amendment to allow some changes within this region to allow for some districts to be created. Um, but I think it's important to, to tell folks this is not about forcing a community to take any form of transportation or transit services they do not want. It gives those communities a seat at the table because in regionally what happens in Fulton, DeKalb, Gwinnett, Cobb has a direct effect on all those other outlying metro mm -hmm. counties mm -hmm. and it's important for them to have input in that. Uh, so we're, we're going to give them a seat at the table, but we're not forcing them to do anything. But, you know, that, on that same question, just to kind of go, go for it, because I know the, the situation you're talking about in Cobb County, but if you take a section of Cobb County and just charge that section for transportation, wouldn't that be extremely expensive for that area? And then secondly, if you have that area of Cobb County getting transportation, wouldn't even the fact that it just went to that part, wouldn't it really be helping the entire county by having it in that one section, but that other part is not paying for the benefit that they would get for it being there? Well, it, uh, it wouldn't be any more expensive because they're only paying the one penny uh, tax. So that area would be paying the one penny tax. And as we start getting closer to finalizing this, you'll hear some numbers about how much money will be generated just from that section of Cobb, and it's, mm -hmm. it's tremendous. Um, and, but you could say the same thing about neighboring counties. You know, if, if Cobb County gets transit services, that's also benefiting Cherokee, which is not necessarily paying for it. Mm -hmm. You know, if Fulton County, North Fulton gets bus rapid transit and they're paying for it, it's benefiting for Scythe County. So whatever we do is having a benefit for our neighbors, I think. But um, th we have to also operate in the, in the realm of reality. And the reality is if we put something like that out to a vote in Cobb countywide, chances are very, very slim that it's not going to pass. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, it's not, I mean, not going to pass. So uh, we have to... Uh, we don't want to punish those areas of Cobb that can benefit from this and want this and are willing to pay for it because ultimately the voters have to ask, be right. asked the question, are you willing to pay for the service? The voters in that section will get to make that choice for themselves. Okay. One of the questions that has come up to me, Representative Tanner, and having conversations with people in the district is around the state funding of MARTA and if, there are, is, if there's going to be any change in um, state support in the funding for Marta Rail. Well, it would be buses. yeah, it would be my um, intention to have some dedicated funding sources for transit services, um, and also uh, other ways to fund transit services. 
but not dictating from a state level where that funding should go and how it should be utilized. I think it's important to allow this regional transit authority to develop that plan and allow them to make the decisions. So uh, my, my goal is is set up some funding opportunities and funding options from the state and be able to have that money go to the regional transit authority and then let them decide how it's going to be utilized in the region. Uh, again, I think you'll hear a common theme, at least from me, this is because uh, a lot of folks going into this have been concerned about the state trying to take over transit services. Mm -hmm. um, this is not about the state taking over. This is about creating the ability for a regional governance board to have a lot of control over transit in the region. But that board is selected very much from the local level up, not the state. Uh, the state actually would only have three appointments, one from the governor, one from the speaker, and one from the lieutenant governor. But 10 of the members are coming from the local folks. So. I think that's very important. To me, it's important because uh, that way we're forcing regional coordination and the local folks to make these decisions on a regional level, which is important, uh, but it's not the state dictating it. So, yes, the state's looking to have a ma more of a major impact on funding transit. Okay. And is there a timeline for this new regional governance structure? Well, it would be my hope that in a couple of weeks we'll have the legislation ready to roll out and we'll be able to move that legislation through the General Assembly this session. Again, is okay. what I'm hoping for. And if it passes, then it would be probable that this uh, board would be stood up and ready to go in January of next year. Okay, before we run out of time, and we are going to run out, uh, I want to give you guys a, a, a last chance to say anything that you'd like to say on the topic. And then we're going to close it out with you saying whatever you'd like to say. So. Anything? I just wanted to thank you for coming again and thank you, Representative Bruce, for um, sponsoring this topic or having this topic because we know that this is a major issue. It doesn't matter where you live, it's an issue. Mm -hmm. And our constituents deserve an explanation and to be a part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So, again, thank you. I think this. Um, this is a very vital conversation. Georgia is continuously talked about as the number one state to do business, and we can't continue to be at the top of that list if we don't improve our traffic congestion, and that includes making sure that, we adequately, that we're adequately funding rail and road services. So thank you for your leadership on this topic, and I look forward to working with you as we continue to mesh out the details in the legislation. Um, I guess I want to say, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for leading this effort. Uh, transportation is an issue that we deal with every day. Everybody in this room deals with transportation on a personal level. So thank you for leading this bicameral, bipartisan effort uh, to do something that all Georgia citizens want to see improved. So thank you. Well, thank you all for having this discussion. You know, one of the things that um, I found here under the Capitol is many times our constituents don't get the factual information that they need to make good decisions. And I appreciate Representative Bruce, uh, again, sponsoring this, getting the information out correctly. And I will say this to all the legislators, both from the Senate and the House, my door is always open in this conversation. I, I want to solicit everyone's opinion and their input so that we're able to come out with a piece of legislation that we can stand united in supporting. Um, most legislation, we're not going to be able to get everyone 100 percent happy. Mm -hmm. And I always tell folks, if we can just not have anybody real mad, we're in a pretty good <laughs> spot. So that, I, that, that's pretty much what everything <laughs> we do down here. So, so I'm looking forward to moving this legislation. And, and at the end of the day, there's very few things, and I'll leave it with leave you with this. There's very few things any of us as elected officials will be involved in that anyone is going to remember 20 years from now. Very, very few bills we vote on will you ever remember 20 years from now. But I'll tell you, I really believe that we're at a transformational place in our state that what we do here, if we do it right, 20 years from now, you're going to remember you were part of this decision that, that changed the course of uh, mobility services in the metro area. I'm excited to be a part of it, and I look forward to partnering with you, all of you to make it successful. Well, well while, while I have you here, uh, I need to do, at least take advantage of, of, of the fact that you're here. Um, I, just this morning, I got a, a message about the area right there, 285 and Cascade Road. Apparently, there was some plan, and you may be aware of it, uh, 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 to redo that area. It's probably an accident there at least once a week. And uh, is that in your plan? Do you know the area I'm talking about? 
I will be honest with you. I have, there's so many roads in Georgia, right. so many intersections. Okay. I don't know. I would have to go back and read. Okay. Well, research. I'm, I'm going to come see you about yeah, that one. Okay. That, that would be good. And uh, <laughs> because that, that's just one area. But I want to say thank you also to all of you um, and, and to you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think we need to have more bipartisan conversations. Uh, and, I, and I appreciate you coming and, and, and doing this with us. Uh, certain st subjects, you know, health care, transportation, education, those things, you know, are, should not be based on whether you're a Democrat or Republican or, or anything else. It should be based on the fact that there's a need for that and that we are in positions to try to collectively work to make those things uh, effective across the state. So I appreciate that. Um, my suspicion is that once this goes out and everybody sees it, that there's going to be constituents that will have questions about what we just talked about. Would you like to give them some uh, contact information or something so that they would be able to uh, reach out to you with those questions? Uh, yes, they're, they're welcome. N number one, you can contact your... Uh Yes, I need my microphone, but <laughs> you're, you're welcome to contact, number one, you can contact your local representative or senator and they can talk to me, or you can contact my office, uh, or you can reach me through my email, which is kevin.tanner at house.ga.gov, and we'll be glad to uh, respond back to you with any, uh, any questions you may have, but uh, we're looking forward to continuing to work on this. Okay. Thanks again for joining us for this special edition of Under the Gold Dome. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. And uh, is it all right to, uh, she, she's over there, our, come on over here real quick and tell us what we're going to do on Friday. Come on, hurry up. On the spot. Put you on the spot. Come on over here. Okay, I'll stay Sorry. All right. Um, so tomorrow, I'm sorry, not tomorrow, on Friday. <laughs> Friday we will be having our, I believe it will be our fourth episode, and what we will be talking about will be the topics of domestic violence legislation that addresses domestic violence and that addresses um, sexual assault and human trafficking in the state of Georgia. It's a very important topic, hard topic, but it has to be tackled, and what better place to tackle it than here on Under the Gold Dome with Representative Roger Bruce. All right, I like her. <laughs> All right, thanks you everybody for, for joining us, and uh, uh, please, when you get this, pass it on to other people, share the information, and thank you guys again for participating. Thank you. Thank you.